Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and in this video I'm going to talk about how to select a SSD drive for your computer. If you have been following my videos, you might have known that I'm a big proponent of SSD because I personally feel that SSD uh, upgrade is one of the best things that you can do for your computer and by adding SSD you can get a performance boost of up to 2 to 5 times uh, when compared to traditional hard drives. The thing is that I do get a lot of questions regarding SSD and normally I get questions like this Ranjit. Uh, I have selected this SSD drive for my computer. Is it good for me or not? And the problem with that is that there's no way that I can suggest that that drive is good for you or not because uh, SSD that is good for me might not be good for you. And also it is not humanly possible for me to uh, test all SSD drives. And my general philosophy is that I do not recommend products unless I have tested them personally. So uh, what I'll be doing instead is that I'll be listing some points, pointers that you need to look when you are purchasing an SSD. So hopefully by uh, looking at these uh, pointers, you can judge which SSD is good for your basic needs. The first thing we will look at is that, uh, does your computer support a SSD? If you're buying a new computer, it will definitely support an SSD. But let's say your computer is say about four or five years older, you need to look at uh, the motherboard specifications and figure out if your motherboard has a SATA controller and also does your motherboard support AHCI mode? If it doesn't, then SSD will not work on your computer. The second important thing that you need to look uh, when uh, purchasing an SSD is the type of controller that uh, your SSD is offering. On most of the motherboards, I would say 99% of the latest motherboards, you'll find the uh, SATA 2 controller. And the SATA 2 controller uh, gets uh, can sustain speeds up to 3 gigabytes per second. And we have a new interface called SATA 3 and this can uh, get speeds up to 6 gigabytes per second. And we also are getting some latest SSDs that can take advantage of the SATA 3 interface. The typical uh, speeds that you can expect with a SATA 2 uh, interface is around 270-280 to MB per second and with the high-end uh, SATA 3 SSDs you can get speeds up to 520-550 to 550 MB per second. So again before purchasing an SSD look at your motherboard to determine what kind of interface you have. SATA 2 or SATA 3. You can always put a SATA 2 SSD on a SATA 3 based motherboard but it's not a good idea to purchase a SATA 3 SSD and put it in a SATA 2 interface. It will work but uh, you won't uh, get the performance of a SATA 3 uh, SSD by putting it to a SATA 2 uh, motherboard. Also I would like to point out that not all SATA 3 controllers are equal. Uh, some of the third party uh, early uh, SATA 3 controllers that I've seen uh, that were added in 2010 or 2011 motherboards, for example, third party like Marvel, etc. Uh, these SATA controllers uh, do not give uh, great performance. I've seen the, uh, these controllers to offer good read speeds of around 500 uh, MB, but the write speeds that we get with these SATA controllers are just about 200 uh, MB. Personally, the best SATA 3 controller that I have tested are uh, from Intel and the base, and these are basically the native Intel SATA 3 controllers. So also keep that into mind. Uh, the next important thing to look at is uh, the actual capacity that you're looking for SSD because SSDs uh, are pretty expensive. Uh, 60 GB X SSD, you can have it for approximately about $100 but a 120 GB or a 160 GB SSD will be significantly expensive. So make sure how much data you need and take SSD according to that. Also, it is not a good idea to overfill your SSD. And I would generally say that leave at least about 15% of the room empty for any drive. It will be a hard drive or SSD for optimal performance. So take that into account when choosing the capacity for the SSD drive. Next, you need to look at is the actual uh, read and the write speeds are of, that are offered by the SSDs. Uh, these will be the advertised. Generally, the watt speeds that you see uh, by marketed by the manufacturers are these are generally the uh, sustained read and the write speeds. But you also need to look at the random read and the write speeds because these are more important. And in general, everyday computing, uh, these uh, random read and write speeds are much more important. Next, very important thing that many people overlook is does the SSD offer native garbage collection? This is really important because SSD, uh, as you know, SSDs are nothing but uh, these are flash memory chips. And uh, as time goes by, 
uh, these degrade a flash chip can be only written uh, x number of times so after some time it degrades so if your ssd does not have a native garbage collection over time it will slow down so it is really important to look at native garbage collection and also look for support for trim i would personally never buy a ssd that does not support native garbage collection even if it supports just trim because trim is only supported with windows 7 so if you're planning to install uh, the ssd in older operating system like say uh, windows xp or vista make sure your ssd supports native garbage collection the next important thing to look at is the type of warranty that is offered by ssd i have been personally using ssds now for about one one and a half years and also in the la during the last six months i have put the uh, ssd drive on my main computer main desktop computer in which i do all my video editing etc and i abuse the ssd like crazy every day as you know i work a lot with youtube videos in it and that's hd footage so every day apart from my regular computing just the video footage that i work is about 6 to 8 gb and my main drive is an ssd so every day i write about 6 to 8 gb of data on the ssd and uh, I don't have any problems with the SSD. So uh, in my personal usage, I didn't never had a problem with SSD drives uh, regarding the reliability. But again, this is a new uh, technology and it's not as old as our traditional hard drives that uh, we have been using for decades. So I would highly suggest that when you're buying an SSD, look for a manufacturer that offers a good warranty. I would say look for SSD that offers at least three year warranty and go with reputed manufacturers like Intel, uh, Kingston, OCZ uh, or Samsung. And I also want to talk about some of the negative aspects about the SSD. As this SSD uh, technology is relatively new, I would highly suggest that if you're using SSD, do periodic backups. It's not that it's if you're just using SSDs, you need to do backup. I strongly suggest that you do backups also if you're using a traditional hard drive. But if it's SSD, I uh, strongly suggest that you do regular backups because uh, uh, if a SSD fails, it is very, very difficult to retrieve data from the SSD. So by looking at these points that I've mentioned, you should be able to get a good SSD for your particular needs. I hope uh, you found this video helpful. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and hopefully I'm going to see you in my next video.